So today's video is inside Avenger 2 and how we can route different things. So the first thing that we're going to be tackling is the drums because there's a lot of cool drum samples that come with Avenger, also with the factory library and whatever expansions you have in your library. So what I like to do is route these outside of Avenger and then process them in my DAW. So let's go ahead and start doing that first. So we have an init patch here and we have the saw wave. So what we can do is bring this level all the way down because we're not going to need this oscillator. And then if we play something, we're not going to hear anything, right? So we need to go to our drums tab. Now, one of my favorites inside Avenger is in the Factory 2 library, the Cybekit 1. This one sounds really cool to me. So if we go to our zones, this is going to be where our drums are going to be playing. So make sure to play a note inside here for now. So what we can do is play a note. And we have these drums, which is really cool. We can also go to our drum sequencer and change this pattern if we'd like to. But for this case, what we can do as well is route this outside of our DAW. And if we want to use our own DAW to sequence these, we can do that as well. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to say, OK, we need to get these drums not as a stereo channel. If we look down here, these are all going to be coming out as stereo. We want individual kick, snare, hat, so on, so forth. So the first thing that we need to do is kind of look how we can route this out, right? So if we're inside of our drums tab and we say, OK, this is going out the master effects, right? And this is where we see this stereo signal. If we left click this, we can assign all different stuff here. But at the bottom is a very cool shortcut. It says assign slots to auxiliary one through 12, which is going to be our drum. So if we click this here, we have this routed. And to know that, we can go to our mixer tab and then down here on the drums subcategory, we can see that we have our bass drum, rim, snare one, clap, snare two, so on and so forth, right? And at the top, we can see the routing is already done for us. So we can click here on this aux, we can say, okay, this is going out the aux, the bass drum, and then this one's going out the rim, and so on and so forth. Cool. So we can play uh, some notes and we see that all these meters are bouncing, they're routed. So what do we need to do next? If we close this guy, we can go to Avenger here on Bitwig, and it might be different for the DAW that you're using, but if you're in Bitwig, we can click these double uh, arrows here, and we can go add missing chains, and then we play the sequence with one note, and we can scroll down, and we can see that all these are routed to their individual tracks. We can solo the kick drum. We can solo the snare. And the cool part about this is that we can click on the snare, and we can add some vintage verb. So we can process these drums individually. Now, for the most part, I don't really do it extra EQ to these or compression because they already sound pretty good. So there's not really much I need to do as far as like EQ or compression. I like to put some reverb on it, maybe some interesting delays in the hi-hat, stuff like that. That might be kind of fun. So this is a cool way to bring these outside of a venture into your DAW and process them how you would like to. Now, doing this as well is since they're on these separate tracks and these se separate... Uh, I guess separate tracks, you can process them how you want to. Now, the cool part about sequencing, for example, so if we go back to Avenger and you want to program these individually, if you hit different notes, let's unsolo this snare real quick. It's going to re-trigger that sequence every single time. So if we want to do this individually inside of our DAW for like a, a MIDI clip, we need to go back into Avenger and then just turn off the drum sequencer. So now different keys will trigger the different drums. So that's definitely pretty cool. So that's a, that's a pretty cool workflow that I really like using Avenger for because it's really nice. A lot of the drum kits sound very good and it's easy just to do this one time and then save that as a preset called like drums multi out or something like that. So you don't have to do this every single time, which is very, very helpful. So another thing that I want to share as well. So if we initialize this now, What's crazy within Avenger, how I'm sure you've noticed some of the patches, there's drums, there's bass, there's arps, there's leads. So there's a lot of crazy stuff going on, right? So wouldn't it be cool if depending on whatever stuff we're sending to different racks, we can route that individually as well to our dock, kind of like how we do with our drums. So luckily we have some, I was going to say auxiliary aux sends, which is kind of a, I guess a double word. I don't know. But anyway, this is kind of how we'd go about that. So let's say we have our first oscillator. And let's say we give a full mix of unison, and I guess we can scroll down to seven voices. So if something kind of like that, maybe change the amp a little bit. Maybe increase some resonance and a little bit of modulation, nothing too crazy. So let's say this is our lead and it's going to our first effects, right? So we look on our first oscillator, maybe double click this and call this lead, for example, or something like that. Now, if we see this stack here, we can see this is going out effects one, which is this rack. Now, if I click this here and I say, maybe I want some delay, maybe I want some root of verb. So that's maybe our stack here. Let's bring down the decay just a little bit, it's a little much. 
Okay, so this is our first sound. This is our lead that we're gonna play. Okay, so that's done. So now what we need to do is let's say maybe we want to have like an ARP bass inside this thing. So let's first mute this lead and let's go to the plus and let's say this offset two is gonna be our bass, right? <laughs> With two S's obviously, B-A-S-S. -S. Okay, so we have this bass and we can drop this down an octave. We can scroll wheel here, drop down an octave. That's a pretty nice little shortcut there. Maybe a little bit of unison and then drop down the panning. So you have something like that. Now, as we can see this, Base here is also going out the effects one, which is our delay in our root verb, which we probably don't want the same processing. So instead of out effects one, let's go ahead and create FX two. And then if we left click this, we can go FX two. So this is great. Now this base is also getting sent to the same amp and also the same filter. So what we need to do is do uh, amp two and then filter two. So we're processing this almost entirely with the second amp, second filter, second effects rack, so on and so forth. So now we need to do the routing that we have all this here. So we're on our base, we look at our routing panel and we say, okay, we have another amp, so let's select this first amp and let's go to the second one. And then we wanna use another filter for this guy. So if we look at this guy, okay, where is it going on the filter? Bam, right over here, filter one. Let's click this and let's go to filter two. And we can always right click things in case we don't know where something is, which is really nice. So now this base is for the most part init, right? It has its own empty effects rack, has its own empty default amp envelope and a new filter. Definitely cool. So now let's maybe make a bass sound, right? Let's bring this filter pretty close to down here, give it some modulation with the envelope. We have something like that, maybe some resonance. And we maybe don't want sustain for this, maybe drop this down. Something like that. And let's bring this, uh, maybe give it a little bit of an EQ for now, maybe we can touch that later. And then do some compression for this guy. Maybe one, two, eight, something like that. I always kind of like doing that. So we have this base. Okay, pretty cool. So maybe we want to do an ARP. So let's select ARP one, and we can always, like I said, right click if we want to go to it. So now we have this. Right, maybe bring our tempo down just a little bit. It's kind of fast. Let's go from 140 to maybe like 120, something like that. That might be kind of cool. Awesome. So maybe let's make it a little bit cool, raise a couple of these. Okay, so we have our baseline pretty much. So now if you unsolo this lead, we have these two sounds. Now the lead is overpowering the bass. What we can do, if we go down to our mixer, we can, first of all, we can mute this lead. We have our bass, and let's bring this volume down all the way, and let's kind of just fade this into where, I guess it kind of feels right. Okay, so we have something like this. So now let's say we have our lead, we have our bass, and you can keep adding on. There's more oscillators that you can do. So let's say we want to split some of these out to our DAW. So we need to do that inside of our effects rack. So our first one is our lead, right? The saw lead. Now, if you look at the routing here, this is going out to the master effects. Now, if we click this here, we can say, where do we want to send this to, right? We have our master effects, which is this here. We can send this to the next effects rack if we wanted to. But down over here, we can either go the main output or we have four auxiliary sends, right? So we're sending the signal to that aux. So if we select the first one, which is really cool, and for the second effects here, we can select this here, and go to the second one. So now our lead's going to aux one and our bass is going to aux two. Now what's cool about this thing here is if we do the same thing, we look at this, this routing here and we say, okay, up here we have aux one, two, three, and four, these outputs. So if we pr play a note here, we have our sound. Now these are on individual tracks and we solo this guy. There's our lead and then here's our bass. And together. which is really cool. So we have four of these that we can use and also the entire drum set. So that's what's really cool within Avenger is that you can have the entire drum kit inside of a patch. You have these four auxiliary sends that you can use for your effects banks, right? So if we keep adding these here, this is going to max out to four. So you can have different sounds going to these different effects banks and those are splitting individually out to your DAW and you can do whatever it is you want with those. So that's a really cool workflow because sometimes I've thought with different kind of plugins where you have an intense patch going on. You have all these 
thing, all these moving parts, but it all funnels down to one stereo track and it's kind of, you don't really have too much control after that. Maybe there's some interesting plugins that you have that maybe you want to put a certain saturation on your bass that you really like, or maybe there's things you want to do with a lead that you can't do inside this plugin. Now you can bring those out and do whatever it is you want to do. So that's a huge plus for Avenger 2 for me is that you can do this type of flexibility and this type of routing. Not to mention, like I mentioned earlier, is that with this output, you can say effects one goes to effects two, and then who knows where you want to go from there. So yeah, that's a really fun way to do things. So hopefully that helps with the routing, the drums and that kind of thing, because it's a, it opens a lot of doors as they say. So yeah, thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you learned something and we'll see you in the next video.